Once the cuff is knitted, I need to shape the heel. I'm going to shape the heel just like I did the rose one. I bring a needle out to hold on the carriage side. My carriage is over here and knit across. Bring a needle out to hold on the carriage side, knit back, and repeat that procedure until I'm all the way down to eight needles. Once I'm down to eight needles, I'm going to increase the same way as before. Just put the needle opposite the carriage. My carriage is over here, so I put the needle opposite the carriage into work uh, by bringing it back halfway, knit across. This is exactly what I did with the row. I will proceed this way until all the stitches are in work again. Once the heel is done, it's time for the foot part of the lining, 22 rows. I had moved over to tension 2. I'm going to leave it on tension 2. The reason for the tighter tension for the lining is so it will be a little smaller and fit inside. So 22 rows plain. Once my 22 rows are knitted, I need to do some decreases. I put 10 stitches in hold on the opposite side from the carriage and knit across and then I do that again. Ten stitches in hold opposite the carriage and knit back. Now I'm going to do the toe shaping. You'll recall that the toe shaping was a decrease on each end every row until I'm down to six needles. And once I'm down to six, I increase by wrapping under the first needle on the carriage side and then bringing those two needles on each side of the needles and work halfway back so they'll knit. And I do that when the carriage is on the other side, too. Wrapping around the end needle, bringing those two back, and then And I'll do that until I have my 18 stitches in work again. When I have the 18 stitches in work again, I'm going to cut the brown yard and leave a large tail that I could sew with later. And I'll just move that out of my way. My usual trick. I will hang it on a clothespin. And I'm going to knit a few rows of scrap yarn just over these center stitches. After I've knitted a few rows over those center stitches, I'm going to cut that waist yarn and unthread my machine and knit across so that the center stitches drop off. Now to scrap off the stitches on the left, I make sure that the center stitches are back out of work. And I bring the stitches on the left back about halfway. And I'm going to thread up and knit a few rows of waist yarn just over these. Those will drop off. I'll push those needles out of work. And finally, I will scrap off these right-hand needles. Now, what I have created is this U-shaped piece of knitting. This is the outer slipper. That's the cuff. This is the inner slipper. And let me fold that. This is how it's going to fit together. Now, obviously, there's some sewing to do to make this work. You're going to want to refer back to the lesson on Kitchener stitch. And the first thing you'll do is turn this into an inside-out U, so the purl sides on the outside. And you're going to bring these 
side flaps that you knitted over to match up to the toe stitches. With the knitting purl side out, I have it arranged so that I've tucked the two flaps in to sew a toe up. And what I'm going to do is sew from this side edge of the toe over to this open edge of the flap. On the other side, I will start at this side edge and sew to the center. Now, I just run the yarn through the last two loops in the center because the mattress stitch seam up the center front is going to be one stitch inside. So those are going to be inside the seam. After I have Kitchener this toe together here, then I'm going to sew across the top of the foot to where the heel is. And I'm going to stop sewing about an inch before the heel, about here. And that's just going to be a mattress stitch seam, which I will do along there with the right side facing me. I'll do that on the lining. And I'll turn around. And the toe will already be sewed by then on the pink. And I will sew up to an inch from where that heel bends on the pink as well. Here I am with that first toe to sew. You see the, the hump? This bump in the middle is the toe. And then here's that side flap. I'm going to take the side flap, curl it under, and bring it over like that. And I'm going to sew using this piece of yarn from here to here. This is just your typical Kitchener stitch. I like working Kitchener stitch from the wrong side. Goes quickly, looks attractive. You're trying to get about the same size stitches as knitted stitches would be. So it's all in deciding how much you need to draw up. I'll go ahead and stitch the rest of that distance. Now I have Kitchenered from the side edge over to the center, and I end by just going through that last loop. Now I'm going to fold this other side over like this, and I'm going to Kitchener it from the side to the center, just as I did the first one, so from here to here. That's how my toe looks once I've sewed from here to here and from here to here. And I've left my ends dangling because I'll use them later. I'm going to remove this waist yarn next. Here's the toe right side out and sewed up. Now I'm going to sew up the center front of the foot using mattress stitch. I need to be careful because this seam will show. I will stitch one stitch in from the edge. You could review the lesson on how to do mattress stitch. It's in the beginner videos. So here I am mattress stitching up the center front of the pink. This all goes very quickly because they're such large stitches. And I plan to stop about an inch before the bend. Here's the brown toe sewed from the edge to the center on one side and from the edge to the center on the other side. I will flip that right side out, remove the waist yarn, and then I'm going to mattress stitch down the center of the foot. Here's the slipper with the two toes sewed up. Now all that's left 